This week, let's build a magical shrine that can be found in some ancient forest. Or take that top off and place it on top of the tower that we built a few weeks back to make that building reach up into the clouds. This week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're gonna step it back a little bit on the difficulty level with this shrine. But keep in mind, this is still a piece right here that holds a ton of versatility on the table. You can turn this thing into a gazebo in a town square or place it as a little uh, shrine in the middle of a forest somewhere with a magical font inside of it. You could also take it and put it on top of that tower that we built a few weeks back. Ton of different options here. So let's grab some materials and let's get crafting. All right, so you can head over to drive through RPG if you want and print these plans off. But the base of it is basically a two by two uh, structure here that we're gonna build. That's about three and a half to four inches tall on the walls. So you're gonna take a bunch of bricks, cut these out um, three quarters of an inch long. And the width is going to be half that length. That's important. So you wanna glue those together, just alternating those and make four of them, six blocks high. Then you can go ahead back to the plan and print off the archway that's going to go over the entrance to the shrine. And then trace out uh, four of those as well. Then go ahead and cut those out on uh, some XPS foam. And then you want to go ahead and mark out your brickwork on those. And then texture them. Now on the four uh, like brick columns that you made, you're gonna cut little uh, lips or ledges out that those uh, archways are gonna fit on top of. And then cut a small toothpick and uh, put a little soup uh, hot glue on it and then stick that right into the arch on both sides. And it's just gonna help that uh, stick to each column. It really sturdies that up. All right, so you're obviously gonna go ahead and do that to every archway and connect them all together. You should be left with a structure that looks like that. Then we're gonna print the floor out. So it's simple, it's just a two by two um, piece of XPS foam. And you wanna cut maybe about a third of it in width. It's a half inch piece of XPS foam. So cut that about a third of the width. Now we're gonna go ahead and pin a few more um, toothpicks into the base of the shrine. And then we're going to super glue it, uh, hot glue, sorry, and then stick uh, the floor into that. And again, that's just going to help hold it together. Then once that's done, we'll go ahead and take some more bricks and continue that brickwork all the way to the top. And just tracing out the pattern so that you know what to cut to make the bricks fit um, on the column here. All right, now once you get to the top, if it's uh, not completely level, no problem, just take uh, an alpha knife or an X-Acto and uh, cut that so that it's nice and uh, square on the top. Then you can hot glue that. And then using the plans, you can measure out um, this top piece that we're gluing it to, that the dome is gonna be glued to. But again, it's just a little bit bigger than the, uh, obviously the outside of the, the columns there. Now we're gonna make the dome. Basically we're gonna be taking an inch piece of XPS foam and measuring the height. And you're gonna do that twice because the diameter of this dome is two inches. And then glue those together. All right, now using a uh, circle jig to cut this out. Um, I made this one, but you can buy these uh, like from shiftinglands.com, they sell them. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a nice uh, circle out of this cylinder. 
and then drawing an arch around it a bunch of times um, just to help uh, with the cuts here. You're going to make uh, rounded cuts around the top of that cylinder um, until you're left with a dome. Uh, Shifting Lance does sell a dome cutter that would have been perfect here. I did pick one up, but I didn't have it in time uh, for the video. But you don't need it because uh, we're going to be covering this anyway uh, with some shingles. Uh, so now we're going to just take a one inch round base and mark out the top of the dome. We're going to cut that off and we're going to place this round base on top. So once we've cut the top of the dome flat, we can then uh, glue this piece on top. Now we're going to go ahead and add some hot glue to the dome that we cut out and glue that on top and then glue the little round piece as well. Now we're going to go ahead and place some shingles around the dome. And the first layer of shingles, you're going to want to cut those flush so that they sit flat. Um, as you can see there and then all the rest of the shingles you can kind of leave jagged and basically I'm just taking a half inch piece of XPS foam and drawing out a shingle pattern cutting it on the proxon and then basically shaving that piece of XPS foam like you would cold cuts on in a deli so I get about seven strips of uh, shingles out of one half inch piece of XPS foam you can see how thin they are here and just hot glue it and wrap them around and you can go ahead and you can use you know individual pieces of XPS um, if you don't have a proxon to make um, these strips here. You can just do individual shingles. Just makes it a little bit easier doing it um, the way I did it here. All right, once we have all the shingles on, we'll add some um, wood texture to the top piece and we'll texture all the shingles as well. I use a brush and then I use the uh, clay sculpting tool here to add some deeper gouges um, for a little bit more definition into the wood. Okay, now we're gonna put some banding on the roof. So we'll just place uh, this right on top and we'll take a pen and mark out um, where that strip's gonna go. And then just uh, be careful here and uh, use an X-Acto, cut that out. And then I'm using this wood sculpt uh, clay sculpting tool to uh, basically rip the shingles off here. Once those are off, add a little bit of hot glue. And then you can stick that uh, banding right in place. And we're going to do this uh, four times on each corner. Once you have those on, I like to just add a few uh, holes to act as uh, rivets or nail holes that would be holding this on. Now we're gonna get ready, because um, we're gonna place a magnet here. Um, you can cut this out with an X-Acto. You gotta be real careful when you're burning this stuff. You wanna have a mask on and a fan, um, but an X-Acto would work just fine. Add a little bit of hot glue into that hole, and then uh, make sure you got the polarity right, and uh, stick a magnet into there. And then uh, you always wanna put a little bit of hot glue over the top of that, um, so that way it keeps the magnet from pulling out because they are very strong magnets. Now we'll go ahead and we'll cut out this lattice work. That's gonna go on the top of the archway. This is some plastic canvas. Um, I've got a link, Amazon link in the description below um, to these products that I'm using in the video if you wanna check those out and pick any of those up. And we're gonna cut out an angle uh, and then stick it in place with a little bit of hot glue. And then we'll cut a um, piece of XPS foam that's going to be glued to the bottom of the lattice as well. A small little piece and just slide that right into place and that'll hold fine. You want to make sure you add uh, wood texture to this. And then I cut a few holes out in each corner. I'm going to add some hot glue. And I had some pegs here from a game that uh, hasn't been used in forever and I'm just sliding those into place. You can use beads here, um, anything you got laying around just for a little bit more, uh, you know, detail. Okay, then we'll go ahead, Mod Podge, and um, 
basically Mod Podge, black paint, and a little bit of water. Paint the whole thing. Um, adds a little bit of rigidity to the uh, craft. And then we'll go ahead and we'll paint all the uh, stuff that's going to be wood brown, like a dark chocolate brown. All the stonework on this is going to be a light gray. And then the banding, I'm doing a um, light copper color. And um, obviously these little uh, pieces here, whatever you want to call them, um, those are going to be that, that copper color as well. And here's a really light color, light, light gray, that I'm going to dry brush. And this is going to get knocked down quite a bit once we do the black wash. And then we'll do a light tan for the shingles. And this is a uh, Vallejo brown wash. Um, I'll go ahead and paint everything uh, that was wood on this with the brown wash. And then with a, uh, again, yeah, making sure that you get uh, all the wood here with that. Now I'm using a uh, Games Workshop. It's uh, Nolan Oil. I'm going to paint all the copper with this, give it a good wash. And you want to do a black wash on all the stonework once that's done. We'll go back with a light gray and I'm giving it kind of a, a heavy dry brush here. Um, and then uh, we'll do some highlighting now. Taking that copper back out and just doing some edge highlighting um, just to make it really shine and stand out. All right, now we'll go ahead and take some uh, butcher's twine, paint it green, and I'll use that for my vines. And uh, just let that uh, uh, cure for, you know, maybe 20 minutes, half hour. Then you'll be all set. And use some super glue to wrap it up and around um, the stone feature. You can see I'm running it through the lattice work as well. And then up and around to the top of the dome. And you don't want to glue it all flat. Um, you want to have some of it kind of looping and up in the air. It makes it look more alive. So you have something like that right there. Now we're going to grab some leaves. You can see I have a, a dead vine that I've made branching off here to the right. Just a little dab of super glue and sticking those on and uh, they'll hold really well. And I found that these leaves, um, when you dab in the super glue, they really soak up that super glue, so the whole leaf becomes a, a really hard, rigid piece, and they actually hold on here really well and hold up to, you know, some rubbing um, and bumping action on here if you happen to, to drop it at some point. And I went a little sparse with the leaves on here. I didn't want to cover it up too thick, like you've seen in my uh, tavern video. I'll put a link up top if you haven't seen that. Now we're gonna make the topper for the shrine. We're just Mixing up a little bit of green stuff, wrapping it around a one inch base. And this is a uh, piece to one of my old karate trophies. Um, had to make some room, so I had a bunch of these uh, kicking around when I was getting rid of them. I figured, um, you know, I'd uh, keep some of these. Didn't really want to get rid of them, but ran out of room in my basement when I was making the studio. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and smooth that out. And just add a few uh, rivet holes around the base of this right here. And now we're going to paint the whole thing a, uh, a bronze color. And then we'll hit it with that Nuln Oil wash. Really brings out the detail. And that, uh, that eagle. All right, once that dries, we're going to go back with some gold paint now from Vallejo and give it a real light dry brush. And I absolutely love these this color combination. It looks so awesome. And just going in one direction, really keeping in, in mind where the sun would be hitting it, where the light would be hitting the, uh, the top of the shrine. Okay, now we're done with that one. We're going to make a different top for the shrine. And again, we're just going to put a magnet into this little round dome that I cut the same way I did the big dome and glue a magnet into that. Now we'll go into the, the wood storage box and grab a kind of a longer skewer. And here's proof that I 
save all my leftover green stuff. Um, here's a whole bunch of things that I made with it. And we're gonna dig in here and find a green ball. It's about the size that I want. And using this pin vise, we're gonna drill a hole into it because we're making a basically like a flag post for the top of this. Add a little bit of super glue onto that stick. Stick it right in there. Good to go. Now cutting this to length. It's about two and a half inches tall, that pole. And we'll paint the whole thing like a dark, I think they call this like an antique bronze. Then give it a wash. The pole I did like a metallic silver or a gun metal. Once that dries, just give it a, a dry brush again. And it almost looks like it's hammered metal. Um, I love the way the top of that looks. Now I just took some green uh, fabric cut it to the shape, outlined it in a silver paint um, for the flag. And I'm gonna use some black paint here and paint a, uh, a black tree onto this for the symbol of, uh, you know, whatever faction would be controlling this thing. And you know, you can get creative here. Um, you know, obviously put whatever you want on the flag. Now we're gonna glue, uh, hot glue, some Velcro onto this so that this flag can come off and you can change this flag out for any flag you want. Again, um, you know, having the option to change these things out is what, uh, is what makes them great. Um, no reason to just glue this um, and have it a permanent piece. And I left about an eighth of an inch gap there between two pieces of Velcro. You wanna leave a little bit more. I had a little bit of a problem um, connecting this to the flagpole. So just leave a little bit more room there uh, when you go ahead and do it. But it wraps around like that and there it is. So, my style of crafting is all about two major things, playability and versatility. I want to be able to take a build that I did in the past off my shelf and look at it and then change and modify something about it to turn it into something completely new. I got a video coming out in a couple of weeks and I am extremely excited to show you guys. Like extremely excited and I've been trying really hard not to give anything away. So I'm just going to end it there. It's coming out in a few weeks. So make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification. You do not want to miss this video. All right, till next time, I'll see you around.